Hey guys, it is No Makeup Monday. Sorry to scare you a little bit. Um, I am currently working on a project right here behind me. As you can see, it is the old cotton mill here in Jefferson, Georgia. They are turning it into a church at the moment. Before they did that, I wanted to give you a quick outside tour of what it looks like during the daytime from the outside. Um, it's super cool. I had to get it during the daytime. I did go inside at night and I have a great project for you guys, so stay tuned. But I will give you the outdoor look of this amazing cotton mill here in Jefferson, Georgia. Um, this part of the cotton mill was actually a real deal store. The part that they are opening up and you can actually see on the inside. Um, it was a real deal and it was for quite a few years. I am actually going to take you around the outside of this building before they completely transfer it over to Jefferson Church. Um, it is an old cotton mill that was built back, I want to say early 1900s um, and was closed down. This part was, like I said, this part right here that they are doing was a real deals furniture store. Um, and they had like mattresses and such like that. Um, this is just from this side or this point of view of the building that they are redoing um, and turning into a church. Um, but like I was saying, this part was currently used up until a year or so ago. I'm going to show you all the way around to the cool side. And I'm even gonna walk you down the railroad track side as well. But that is the old real deals of a couple of years ago. Over there is a part of this cotton mill. Um, my mother says, because she used to work here, when I was a little girl, I think I was about two, so that would have been like 85, possibly 86. Um, I could have been a little bit older than two. Um, she worked in that building that is actually a rug store at this time. Um, she said that there's actually a tunnel that goes from the cotton mill under the ground over to that part of what used to be a part of the cotton mill, but is now its own separate building and it's a rug store now. Um, but my mom swears to it that there is a tunnel that will take you from the inside of this cotton mill under the ground all the way to that building that used to be part of the cotton mill. All right, so back to the cotton mill that they are turning into a church. Um, it was closed down in the 1950s. Um, the cotton mill part of it was closed down in the 1950s. Um, when I tell you this place is completely haunted, I 100% know for a fact that it is. You will know in future projects that I release that that is a very true statement. Now, this part, I am not sure. I do believe was part of Real, Real Deals as well. But going on the inside and looking, it looks like it's been not used way longer than Real Deals has not been here. Um, my mom said that it was super haunted when she worked here. Um, and there's no doubt that it isn't now. Um, this part was part of the cotton mill and has not been used since 1950. Look at this. It is crazy, 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 but so cool. This is a part of our town's history. Um, this town 
in my opinion, doesn't have the best of history. Um, it was a cotton field town, meaning they had slaves, they had lots and lots of cotton fields. My home is actually built on one of the cotton fields here in Jefferson. Um, this is one of the many amazing projects um, that I'm on. This is just the outside. I do have the inside around 3 a.m. in the morning and I will tell you it was terrifying. But look at this. This is a huge cotton mill. Huge, huge. But for my understanding, this part of the building has been shut down since around the 1950s. Um, super haunted, for my understanding. Um, a man lost an arm in the um, in the engine room, which I don't believe he passed away from that. Rumor has it which from my understanding, it is a rumor, but I will give you a little insight on that rumor, um, that there was a boiler room that caught on fire. Um, I say rumor because my husband and I really have no clue if it's a real story or not from going on the inside. It seems as if something definitely happened here in this building as far as a fire. But, you know, you know how small towns are. They do not want to expose the dreary side and the truth of so much deep, dark things. And I grew up here in this town, so I know how secretive they love to keep everything on the down low. It's a perfect little town where all your perfect little children gather and go to school and bully everyone. Don't get me started on that shit. This town is shit. This was a cotton mill that was closed down back in 1950. Back to my story, the rumor. Um, it has been reopened for an antique shop on this side. I believe that they have closed could be COVID related, just financially, bless their hearts. I hope that they're doing okay. But out of the entire building, I can guarantee you that that is a very small part of the building that is still opened. All right, now I'm gonna take you on to the railroad track side of this building. This building is directly beside a railroad track. On this very railroad track, a boy walked home from school with his headphones on. Um, he apparently did not hear a train right here in this area. I will get closer to that area in a minute. My flip-flop came off, I'm sorry guys. But as you can see, busted window. Can clearly tell that this building has definitely been closed down. Back to my rumor, which reminds me. Apparently in the boiler room, over a hundred people were trapped inside and burned alive. I hear it's a rumor that it really didn't happen. But from my experience, and from going on the inside of this building at the wee early hours of night time, I can tell you that there was definitely some sort of fire that took place in this building. Um, when we went inside, it was super cold. It was a rainy night. It was even chilly outside. Yes, it was a summer night, but we live in Georgia, so the weather's crazy. Um, as we were going into the boiler room area, it was so hot in that room for it to have been closed down since 1950. It should not have been 
so hot in there. But because it has been so hot, um, or because it was so hot in there, we just could not figure out why it was so hot. And all we can figure is maybe that rumor is true that someone or many people did get trapped in a boiler room and they were unable to get out and may have passed. Um, and that's just, you know, in the video of us being here at night, you can even hear us talking about how hot it is in the basement of this place, um, which is usually the area that's cold, right? So if that was an actual thing that happened, it very much is true. Um, you just have people in town in the town that will just want to argue with you about things. But when you've experienced something supernatural like that, it's hard to say that that was a rumor. Now, in this area, between here and right about here, I'm going to take you back a little bit further because I want to talk about the little boy who was walking home from school. He had his headphones in. He was walking in this direction. Um, we're about to get to the spot where it took place. Um, he had his headphones in. Apparently, he didn't hear the train coming. From the experiences that my daughter has experienced here at Jefferson City Schools, um, I hope I'm wrong, but it breaks my heart to think that you wouldn't hear nor feel a train coming towards you regardless if you have headphones on. Now this was in 2016, possibly 15 when this happened, even 14. I would even give it 2014. Between 2014, 2016, the little boy was walking home from school. He wasn't in elementary school. He was in, I believe middle or high the two hardest schools to attend here in Jefferson, which is middle school and high school. Um, the bullying is an extreme, extreme issue that is not taken seriously here. So as this boy walks down this very spot on the railroad track with his headphones in, he's hit by a train and killed instantly. Um, it's heartbreaking, very heartbreaking. And that happened right here in this area. Um, to know that school was so hard for this child that he had to put on headphones and walk his last walk just to end it. And it's so sad because that's how tough and hard the bullying is here. That is my story on the child walking down the railroad tracks um, and being hit by a train right here beside this cotton mill. Um, rest his sweet, sweet soul. Um, I don't wanna know what type of bullying he endured to make him wanna do something like that. Um, it's never been said that he purposely did it, but you can't tell me with my experience of the bullying here in this town, that he didn't hear that train coming over those headphones, nor did he feel the tracks shaking. There's no way he didn't hear it coming. With that being said, rest his soul. All right, and this is the side of the cotton mill that is beside the train, the railroad tracks super beautiful um i find beauty in the abandonment of buildings like this i mean it's absolutely gorgeous um even going in at night super creepy i'm not gonna lie to you it is so creepy they've done a lot out here since i've gone in you can tell that people must be really getting in there now um I was one of the first ones and I know that for a fact because I waited until the perfect moment. 
this has become my passion is to capture the beauty of abandoned buildings and the history is even cooler to me um just look how old that still is on this building i mean the place is super old no doubt about it now this side of the building i'm going to take you on down here where you see that light kind of shining right there stop so you can maybe see it it's right right there um that is now a wedding venue they use the red brick is where the red the wedding venue begins on the inside um this is the wedding venue from this side of the railroad tracks um they do not use all of the side doors for the wedding venue just because as you can see it's not very kept up but um it is definitely definitely a beautiful piece of history but the story behind it is sad to me because who picked all that cotton who picked it you know who picked it we're not gonna i don't have to tell you who picked that cotton this was a plantation town where lots of plantation homes stood and lots of plantation land stood. Lots of um, slave homes in this area. It was a slave town, point blank period. And that's why it's so dreadful to me and it's so fake and um, just dreary. I mean, I'm sorry when a piece of land or town holds those types of memories and moments, it carries that legacy on forever. Those bad memories stick around and they continue on to the next generations and generations until someone comes along and says, hey, let's bring this to light so that these people can be recognized for all their hard work and all of their pain that they've gone through just to make this town what it is today. A shit show. <laughs> and I'm just being honest. I'm not a fan of Jefferson. Um, we've been here for 10 years. Our children attended the school system for three and that was enough for me to say, let's go, we're out of here. We will not attend a school that principals don't assist parents on bullying. But that is a beautiful, that is a beautiful piece of antique property. Um, it used to be the water source here in Jefferson. It's no longer that, as you can see. It's just there for looks. But that is the venue part from the outside. And this is what they're turning into a church, which I'm gonna tell you, that place definitely needs some Jesus in there. Um, anyhow, that is my little walk through of this cotton mill. There went the police. He's probably looking for me. Hell, they probably have me on camera somewhere. Anyways, I'm going to shut up. And it's old, antique, abandoned glory. Still very pretty. But the story behind it, it saddens me because the truth never comes out in little towns like this. 